today we're going to talk about the modeling industry and we are here now and oxygen model management we're going to speak with mark and lydia and they're going to tell us what exactly you need if you want to be a successful model the height the body frame the bone structure but i think it's very difficult to put it into words because you can find somebody who ticks all the criteria but still doesn't the package doesn't fit together quite right so i think it's also like a matter of taste to some extent. Yeah, there's a couple that you come in and you think, oh, I'm not sure about her. She's so unusual that is she too unusual or is she actually really beautifully unusual? And it's those ones that sometimes you think, oh, I'm not sure. And it just takes one or two people to pick up on them and they just go. Shh. You know, if, you, if you're working with a commercial agency, you can send you more commercial girls. If you're working with a very high fashion agency, then they won't look at your commercial girls. So, I mean, I think like it's less like the market as a whole and more the agency you're working with. And I think it's changing all the time. And at the, like, you'll have one season where the jaw will be really in, or you have, I think, you know, it changes season on season. Obviously, you've got the basic credentials, which remain the same, but I think like, more boundaries are being pushed as to like, you know, more unusual models are probably coming through more, less so than they used to, I'd say. They can either send images or they can walk in. I mean, in terms of like the attitude, obviously, you know, have to be like polite and everything. We pride ourselves on having models that, you know, don't, you know, not rude to clients or anything, like very polite and friendly. like. You know, don't, don't obviously expect it to happen overnight. We take a lot of young girls on and we're very like specific to them that, you know, we're very clear with them that they need to take it very slowly, like just do it on the weekends from school, build up a book, like slowly do test shoots and don't expect it to happen overnight because obviously these things take time and it's not just going to be one day they walk in, the next day, you know, they're flying out with a full book. It, I mean, these things take time to build up and if if the models are willing to put in the time, then there's no reason why, you know, if we believe they have the right look, why they shouldn't be able to do that. They're looking for a particular size, so normally on the runway, they have to be like 6'2". Paris, yes, they really like the skinny look still. You know, certain designers always want that skinny um, look. Um, Milan, um, again, occasionally will go for the bigger guys, like Josh Gabbana. Sometimes they use like, you know, bigger rugby style guys. Um, so, but normally it's the height. I mean, when I first started, the industry was a lot more clearer. Um, when the client ring up, you knew like, you know, exactly what they wanted. These days, every single client has a different idea of what they want. So on, as for a board, you need to have a certain different types. You can have you know, the main boards, you can have your six foot two runway boys, you need to get commercial guys. Um, there's a big um, look at the moment going around for the bearded guys. You know, so the model can't keep on changing. So it's just getting lots of different sort of selection of different guys that can fit each like club. <laughs> I wish that London would bring back like, like London Fashion Week for men. I know we're now doing a man day at the end of Fashion Week, but the clients, you know, the designers that we crave for, the boys don't travel to Milan and Paris for, you know, don't come to London. Um, it's a shame because London really could do with, you know, a big surge of the big designers like Josh Cabana, Gucci, Prada, and Neil Barrett. If they could come into London for one season to really promote the men's fashion in the UK, I think it would help not only with you know, the buyers and the clients but also the editorial i think it would give london a big boost because the budget in london has completely dropped you know compared to it was you know 10 years ago and it is really hard to get the guys you know the work they want i mean i always find that the guy that doesn't realize they're a model are the ones that work the ones who walk through the door and think they've just you know walked off the runway for dust cabana or something never work you know it has to be there has to be something about them that's unique rather than, you know, they get these young guys and they see a picture and they come in thinking they can instantly do big campaigns. You know, there's a lot of guys out there. The market's very saturated um, and it's just that one look. You know, the client will want that one look that, you know, that guy might have or might not. Like years ago, to be a model, you had a career. You know, you had a modeling career. These days, I think the modeling industry has become so saturated. You know, in London alone, there's, you know, over 50, 60 model agencies just based in London. So, you know, for the actual market, I think it's got so sort of drained. Um, the budget's gone, the money's gone. There's so many models and not enough work. And I think it's, you know, almost killing the industry because anybody, everybody and everybody thinks these days they can be a model. And it's so not the case. Firstly, seriously take a look in the mirror. 
Um, you know, we have guys in, it's like, you know, your mums and your friends will say, model, really take a look at yourself. You have to be, you know, minimum, if you want to be successful, I mean, you have commercial modelers that can be shorter. You have some guys that are, you know, 5'11", 5'10", at a push, you know, do some commercial work, but the work's not as regular as it can be. To be mainstream, if you want to travel um, and do become a sexual model, you have to be, you know, at least six foot two. You know, that is the perfect criteria. Um, and just really take a look at, you know, yourself, because you get so many guys walking through the door and they're just not models. And, you know, the industry is, tough as it is so don't come in expecting just to take off overnight because it might take a year it might take two years with some guys who are now big massive models took five years for their career to take off it's not an overnight money-making success like it used to be so don't come in expecting to be a millionaire